leaders. It's confirmation season here at the church, which means it's faith fair time. As you know, every year our confirmads choose a topic that pertains to their faith, something that they wish to know just a little bit more about. They do the research and they create then a presentation to share with the rest of us. Now the past few years, Faith Fair has been on video as well as projects shared during coffee hour following church. Our confirmads this year, Will, Paige, and Evie, have done an incredible job with their projects. And this coming Sunday, April 28th, they will be around after worship during coffee hour. So those of you who attend worship on Sunday may come and ask the confirmads questions about their projects. However, for those of you who are unable to attend or those of you who simply wish to see what our confirmads did this year for their projects, I invite you to sit back and enjoy the videos that they have created. And a reminder that next Sunday, May 5th, we will confirm Will, Paige, and Evie. And I hope you'll be able to join us as we affirm the baptisms of these youth. Again, I am proud of this group for their creativity and hard work this year. Like many other confirmation years, this group has been outstanding to teach and be with. I hope you enjoy their presentations as much as I have. And again, I hope you are joining us on May 5th to celebrate them and welcome them into the family of St. Peter's. So friends, sit back and enjoy the Faith Fair projects of our confirmation class of 2024. My name is Paige Franz and I'm in the 8th grade at St. Helens and for my topic I chose biblical music throughout time because I really like music and I think it makes up a big part of my life. Music in the Bible. Throughout the Bible and even now music has been and is an important part of everyday life. This is because it can awaken our emotions. Music is another way to spread God's word and praise him. In 1 Corinthians 14, 15, it says, What am I to do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will pray with my mind also. I will sing praise with my spirit, but I will sing with my mind also. We can think of some music as a way of worship. If it's the song sang during Jesus' birth or a more modern jazz, it has been around for a long time. Song of Moses. The Song of Moses is the name given to a poem that is in Deuteronomy. In Deuteronomy 32, it is a song of remembrance and instruction. Psalm 90 could also be considered the Song of Moses because it is the only song written by Moses. Meanwhile, in Exodus 15, it is a song of celebration and praise. According to the Bible, it was delivered by Moses right before his death on Mount Nebo. It is the first song in the Bible. In the song, Moses praises the faithfulness and power the Lord has. God told him to write it so that he could be a witness for him. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest is a Christian hymn otherwise known as the Greater Dexology and the Hymn of the Angels. The song starts with what the angels sang when announcing the birth of Jesus. The song is an example of psalmy idiotici, private psalms that were popular in the 2nd and 3rd century. The song acknowledges that God is in the highest heaven and should be worshipped because he is glorious. Amazing Grace Amazing Grace is a Christian hymn and was written in 1772 by John Newton. He was not very religious growing up. He was mischievous and unreliable until he got married and his passion became the church community. He wrote Amazing Grace about God's grace and mercy to him even after all the bad things he had done. This was only one of many only hymns which were a collection of Newton's hymns used for his rural parish. O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. O Come, O Come, Emmanuel is a Christian hymn mostly used during Advent. Its origins come from the O antiphones. These are a series of chants that are attached to the Song of Mary during the evening prayers. They are sung days before Christmas. This song is tra traditionally sung on Christmas Eve. In 1851, John Mason Neal published the five-verse Latin version, which goes back over 1,200 years. O Holy Night O Holy Night is usually a Christmas song that is about the night of Jesus' birth. It was originally a poem written in 1843 by Placid Capo, and then was sent to the composer Adolphe Adam in 1847. Capo wrote it as a Chris Christmas poem for his town celebration. The song is written about Jesus' birth, which is cataloged in the Book of Luke. The third line of the song says something along the lines of breaking the chains of slavery. This is how it got so popular among the abolitionists and spread through the U.S. It is now one of the most popular Christmas songs. When the Saints Go Marching In When the Saints Go Marching In is a traditional black spiritual song originated from the Christian hymn. 
It is most famously played as jazz. The song is apocalyptic and reflects a lot from the book of Revelation, but there are alarming references to the Last Judgment. The hymn depicts the desire to go to heaven, and you can picture the saints going in through the gates. The original song was slow and unhurried, but now has transformed into a joyful, catchy beat. Um, that's it. Hello, um, we are getting making bread, and I'm gonna show you how. So, um, we first want to start off by getting a large bowl, which I have right here, and then first step is to put in flour into the large bowl, and my recipe says that I need three cups of all-purpose bread flour. Mm. First cup. Second cup. Third cup and final cup. Now we need one and one half teaspoons of yeast. One teaspoon and a half a teaspoon. One and one half teaspoons of salt. One teaspoon, half a teaspoon. Now we need one and one half teaspoons of sugar. One teaspoon of sugar, half a teaspoon. Now we whisk. All done. Now we add one and one half cups of warm water. One cup. And half cup. Now we stir until we get a big sticky ball. All done. Now I have to cover the bowl with a tea towel and place it into a warm spot until the dough doubles. Now the butter is done and I have preheated the oven to 375 degrees. Now you have to deflate the dough with two forks. Now I have to pour one tablespoon of olive oil over the dough and turn the dough ball to coat it in the oil. Oops. Okay. Now it says we have to Transfer the dough to a prepared pan and let the dough rise until 45 minutes or so. So I just rubbed the olive oil all over the bread on both sides and now we do the next step. Now I have to take the dough and transfer it to a pan and put it in the oven. Now we put it in the oven for 45 minutes. And 
This is the final product after it's done. Hi, my name is Evie Nelson and my faith fair project is architecture during Jesus' time and more specifically highlights the seven wonders of the ancient world. The first wonder I'll be highlighting is the Colossus at Rhodes. The Colossus was thought to be a statue of the Greek god Helios straddling the harbor. The Colossus of Rhodes was built in, two, in the year 280 before Christ and only stood for about 50 years. The architecture at this time was not advanced enough to build something like that and instead it was probably more of a pillar with, um, with a golden sphere on top to represent the sun god Helios. The word Colossus doesn't directly translate to any English word but is more similar to the word monument than statue. The Colossus was built in Rhodes, ancient Greece. The Colossus at Rhodes was destroyed by an earthquake roughly 50 years after its construction. The Colossus was destroyed thousands of years ago and no ruins have been found. The next wonder I'm talking about is the mausoleum at Halicarnassus. The mausoleum was built for the king Mausoleus in ancient Turkey. He built it for his wife, Artemisia. The Mausoleus was surrounded with roughly 400 statues, which were built by the most talented sculptors in Turkey. The mausoleum took years to construct, but was fo fully constructed in the year 530 before Christ. It was then destroyed by an earthquake between the 11th and 15th century after Christ. The next wonder I'll be highlighting are the Gardens of Babylon. This is the only wonder that it that is not confirmed to have existed as no ruins were found. No one knows for sure that the gardens existed, but there were countless poems written about its beauty. The Gardens of Babylon were built around 600 BC and were said to have been destroyed about 400 years later in the year 226 BC. The Gardens of Babylon were built for the King Nebuchadnezzar as a gift to his wife in ancient Iraq. Not much information about the gardens is confirmed, but there are many theories about it. One theory, I believe, is that the gardens, although they were real, were not actually in Babylon and instead were somewhere else in ancient Iraq. The next wonder I'll be highlighting is the Temple of Artemis. 60. The Temple of Artemis was said to have started construction around 560 BC and was destroyed about 200 years later in the year 356 BC. After the first construction of the Temple of Artemis, it was burned down in flames by a Greek man named Herostratus. Herostratus did this hoping to immortalize his name. The Temple of Artemis was then rebuilt and then destroyed again by the Gothic Empire. The next wonder I'll be highlighting is the Pyramids at Giza. This is the only ancient wonder that is still standing. There were three pyramids at Giza, each was a pharaoh's tomb. The most well-known pyramid is the Great Pyramid of Giza, which was the pharaoh Khufu's tomb. The other two pyramids were tombs for the pharaohs Khafre and Senfru. The pyramids were built out of bedrock and limestone and were shaped with bronze and copper tools. The pyramid's construction is unknown, but a theory I personally believe in is that the Egyptians started with the underground chamber and used ramps to move the blocks upwards. The next ancient wonder I'll be highlighting is the statue of Zeus at Olympia. The statue of Zeus was constructed in 434 BC by Phaedes the sculptor in ancient Greece. Although the statue's destruction is unknown, one theory is that it was burned down or robbed about five years after its construction. Another theory is that a later emperor moved the statue to Constantinople, where it was destroyed at a later time, likely by earthquakes. The last wonder I'll be highlighting is the Lighthouse of Alexandria. According to ancient sources, the Lighthouse of Alexandria was built in three stages. The lighthouse was said to be more than 350 feet tall. In 1944, an archaeologist discovered hundreds of huge masonry blocks that are thought to be ruins of the Lighthouse of Alexandria. The Lighthouse of Alexandria was thought to be built in around the year 247 BC. Its destruction started in the year 900 and then finally in, in the year 1336 from earthquakes. The Lighthouse of Alexandria was built on the ancient island Pharos and shined across the harbor of Alexandria. At the time of its existence, the only structure taller than it would have been the Great Pyramid of Giza. Those are all of the seven wonders 
Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoyed my faith care project.